Hi everyone, this is Lori Freitag from Revision FX. Today we're going to do something a little different. Since we're all currently in quarantine around the world, maybe just coming out of it or still in it, but a little more time to watch tutorials or demos perhaps, or maybe you're watching this at a later date, still you can relate. Personally, I've been in quarantine a little over a month here in California, and I was missing the outdoors, and I live close to the beach, so even though the beaches are closed, I went to watch the sunset. I didn't break any rules as I had a mask on, I was social distancing, and didn't go on the sand. Anyway, I just took my new iPhone 11 Pro with me and recorded a beautiful sunset in time-lapse mode. When I got home, I was a little disappointed to see all the flicker that was in the beautiful sunset time-lapse. Well actually, I'm not going to lie, I was a little excited. Excited only because I'm currently working on some deflicker tutorials, since we're about ready to release a new version of deflicker. What I'm about to show you utilizes tools that are available in our current version of deflicker, so feel free to shoot your own time-lapse sunset, or I'll provide a link to download this footage and you can follow along. Let's take a look at that sunset time-lapse. As you can see, it's a beautiful sunset and it makes for a cool time lapse apart from all that distracting flicker. I captured this time lapse at 30 frames per second and processing time lapse footage captured at a low frame rate requires a different workflow from processing footage captured at a high frame rate. Revision Effects created deflicker time lapse to address flickering in footage captured at low frame rates. First we want to prepare for using the time lapse plugin by first using the auto levels plugin, also in the deflicker suite. We can add deflicker auto levels to not only stabilize color levels over time, but to help you locate good frames for deflicker time lapse, or simply visualize what's happening. We can set the time range to 15 to make sure the curve is pretty smooth, and select analyze and start analysis. You will notice that keyframing becomes enabled and a new value is keyed at every frame. We want to be in graph mode to see the result curve and establish sections along the timeline where the keyframes are about the same level and in, in between peaks and valleys. This will be the reference for global levels and time lapse. Now we add the time lapse plugin and we can turn off auto levels. We can set reference frame to 26, which is the range that we got from the global correct controls in, all of, in auto levels. We can set the global color correct mode to mean shift, which is the closest to what auto exposure would do, and we set the method. I chose three, coarse color transfer, for large changes. But note that the method isn't always obvious and you might have to try a few out first to determine which works best. If you're in After Effects, you can use the RAM Preview option to RAM Preview a work area. You would find the worst area in the movie and test that section with different methods. That will save a lot of time in test renders. Okay, now we can see a before and after and see the difference between the two. 